the best of the best, the top performers in the industry, they are doing this and nobody else is. This is why they're the top. They are great at establishing rapport with the customer, getting to know the customer, establishing commonalities between themselves and the client, establishing that no like trust factor in five to 10 minutes over the phone, showing genuine interest in that customer. Hey, welcome to the Insurance Buzz. I am your host, Michael Weaver. And today I'm excited to share with you part two of the five step sales system to make six figures in insurance sales. Today, we're going to be diving into rapport building. So on the last episode, I covered structuring your elevator pitch to convert more contacts into conversations. Today is part two. So if you didn't listen to part one, I'd recommend going back and listening to part one to structure your elevator pitch to have more success in those opening conversations to minimize the amount of objections you receive. So when it comes to building rapport, this is the step that I believe is most underrated in the sales conversation, in the sales process. All right, this is the differentiating factor in the conversation. This is where you can really differentiate yourself, in my opinion, in my experience from other insurance professionals. Most insurance professionals literally just go through the application. If you're currently doing this right now, look, it's not your fault. You've just never been trained. You've never been coached properly in how to have a conversation. But if you're currently just going through and you're just going through the application, hey, how many cars do you drive? Who are the drivers? What are your date of births? How are the legal spelling of your first and last name? Do you own or rent? How many miles did you put on your car? Like, you know, all that crap that you need for the application. You have to mix in rapport building. So what I mean by rapport building, write this down. F-O-R, family, occupation, recreation. Family, occupation, recreation. You need to be asking the client questions about their situation. Hey, how long have you lived in the area? What brought you here? Where do you work at? What do you do for a living? All right, same question, just two different formats, all right? What do you do for a living? How long have you been doing that? What does the average day look like for you? What do you do when you're not working? Do you have kids? Kids play sports. What kind of hobbies do you have? What do you like to do for fun? Do you have any big travel trips planned? All right, you have to build. Why do you have to build rapport with the customer? Because no one else is doing it. Everybody else is treating the customer like a transaction. All right, and I'm not saying to ask a question, just to ask a question and not really listen and just move on. You have to practice active listening. Meaning when you ask a customer a question, for example, Hey, what do you do for a living? And they say, well, I work at UPS. Oh, great. So let me ask you like, what, what kind of cars do you drive? Well, we just, we just asked that question to skip over really. What you have to do in that situation to be different is, Hey, Tell me about that. How long you worked at UPS? Oh, 15 years. See, I'm role playing with myself now. Oh, awesome. Well, what does your average day look like at UPS? I'm actually having them talk to me about themselves because the more somebody talks about themselves, the more they're going to like you, All right? Because they never get to, no one's ever asking them questions about themselves. Everyone always talks about their situation. And so you have the ability to get someone to open up to you and build a relationship because you are asking questions about them. You are showing interest in that person. And that is where the magic happens in the sales conversation. The better you can get at building rapport while getting the information you need for the quote. I have a simple rule that I call the 80-20 rule. 80% of the conversation needs to be around building rapport. This upfront conversation All right, you got to build rapport with the customer. You got to get to know them. You have to build commonalities between you and them because if you have commonalities with them, you're instantly going to like them. They're going to like you and people do business with people they know, they like, and they trust. So 80% of the conversation needs to be structured around the rapport building in the discovery conversation, which I'll get to in part three series. All right, that'll be the next episode. But that's what 80% of the conversation needs to be structured around. 20% needs to be structured around the boring information that you have to get for the quote. 
the vehicles, the date of birth, the legal spelling, the owner, the rent, the mileage, you know, all that boring crap. That's 20% of the conversation. And if you can really, really master this, this is why I believe the best of the best, the top performers in the industry, they are doing this and nobody else is. This is why they're the top. They are great at establishing rapport with the customer, getting to know the customer, establishing commonalities between themselves and the client, establishing that no like trust factor in five to 10 minutes over the phone, showing genuine interest in that customer, asking questions because they're genuinely interested and curious about that client situation. Because for you, this is just my belief, for you to be able to do your job right as an insurance professional, You have to have a holistic conversation with that customer, figuring out what their family dynamic looks like, where they work, what their future plans are, what they like to do for a living, what they have to protect so that you can do your job as an insurance professional. So remember the acronym FOR, Family Occupation Recreation, gear the conversation towards that And also remember the 80-20 rule, 80% of the conversation needs to be geared around building rapport. 20% needs to be geared around getting the information that you need to do a quote for the household. All right, so next up we'll have part three series. All right, part three, this is going to be the discovery conversation. All right, so make sure you stay tuned for the next episode. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you let me know. And look, if you want this, if you want what we're talking about already done for you, this is exactly what we do at Weaver Sales Academy. All right, we have our defined training plans that walk you through this from the new business PNC sales conversation to life insurance, to pivots, to prospecting, everything in between. And we do live trainings every Tuesday, all right? Man, so if you want it done for you, let me know. Let's let's connect, let's talk. Other than that, as always, time and attention are by far the most important assets that you have. I appreciate you showing up today. Go out, make it great. <laughs>